Assalamu alaikum, everybody. It is great to have you with us here on day two. So much talk about technology and AI, and particularly smart technologies uh, here today in this particular session with Dr. Fozia, who uh, truly is somebody who is a pioneer in healthcare, particularly in Saudi Arabia as well. And so, uh, Dr. Fozia, if I can uh, just start with taking a look at the industry uh, with you, how you see smart technologies really transforming healthcare, both now and in the future? Uh, thank you, Sally, for nice introducing. Um, I actually, I believe that smart technology are already transforming healthcare in many ways. And uh, it's gonna grow more and more in the future. Let me start first with the current smart technologies example. Uh, we have the telemedicine or telehealth. This will promote access to patient and improve patient satisfaction. And also it's uh, improve uh, the communication between the healthcare provider. The second example for uh, current is uh, artificial AI which help in diagnosis by analyzing patient data and medical image. And uh, moreover, the removable devices that will help to alarm a patient with potential uh, health issues. Uh, for future AI, I think it become more clear that we have uh, advanced AI, um, I think up to 2022, the AI was seeing the people or seeing the world. After 2022, the AI understand the world. So we have uh, moving from learning phase to a game changing phase with AI. Uh, with AI, we can advance AI, we can predict illness and optimize the treatment plan for patient. I was in the course beginning of September where they were talking about a study done in US where the AI can analyze the mammogram and predict breast cancer in women five to six years before it's happened, which is revolutionary. You know that breast cancer is aggressive disease, usually when it is discovered at the terminal stage, and usually we have a lot of complication with it and the outcome wasn't the appropriate. But I think if we have this tool and we're able to identify the patient that five years or six years before it happened and put them in the right track, we have a better outcome and less medical uh, spending on the treatment and the others. As you mentioned there, Dr. Fauzia, some incredible uh, developments that we are seeing in terms of how AI uh, and other technologies can really help us to diagnose at such an early stage and even predict uh, illnesses as well. Such uh, uh, crucial things really for the healthcare industry. But how do you see smart technologies making this kind of medicine more accessible to more people, whether it's being uh, in rural areas, whether they are uh, living in places that are more remote, or whether it's about their socioeconomic status. How do you see that happening? I think it's possible, but it needs um, uh, international strategies, like telehealth uh, services models that has to be applied everywhere where we can reach out for the patient and uh, community outreach and make the accessibility uh, available. I think um, uh, our goal in Hayat National Hospital that we are accessible to any patient. And this is the main vision we have from the start for 25 years ago, that we are approaching patients, going uh, targeting the rural area where is no services there, and we build a trustable organization. And our goal that no one of this community will able to travel to get the medical services. And uh, I think this is aligned also with uh, the vision of Saudi uh, 2030 and the National Transformation Program in healthcare system in Saudi, 
where the aim is to make healthcare accessible and efficient for everyone, regardless what their economic, uh, socioeconomic status or anything. I can uh, remember something about al waqf al sahi which uh, uh, empowered by the government and Minister of Health in Saudi Arabia, where every organization will provide the services as a free for unprivileged people. So last year we did about 1,000 dialysis free of a charge in different city of Saudi. This year we're going for mental health services. And the year before we did about 1,000 cataract surgery for unprivileged in different cities. It's so interesting because I think sometimes we forget a place like Saudi Arabia, how vast the country actually is. It's incredible. Some people may need to actually travel three hours, more than three hours to even reach a hospital. So this is, this is critical here in, yeah, in the industry. Uh, I can give an example for this. We are in the south. We have one hospital in Khamis Mshet and one hospital in Jezan. So we built a, a new hospital, which is going to open recently in October in Abha. It's 550 bed, a tertiary hospital. We found out that a 30% of population will come from a different city, which is called Muhay al Asir. It's about a three uh, hours of driving. We were struggling with uh, providing uh, talent physician to read the radiology uh, report or medical imaging. And sometimes we have a shortage, especially in rural area, and that will delay the treatment plan for patient. When we implemented that, we were able to improve our efficiency, and we were able to monitor the workforce for each staff. And if there is any uh, deficiency in one hospital, we can cover it remotely with the physician from uh, other hospital to back up and read the medical image so the patient gets his result in time. The other uh, application we have is a mobile app, which helps the patient uh, to know about everything related to his condition and uh, to communicate with the physician. And the third one we have is, uh, or sorry, the fourth one we have uh, the digital check-in. So patient can have a digitally, electronically check-in for his appointment. And we started implemented a smart pharmacy in our new hospital where patients uh, can get their medication fast and efficient, either uh, inpatient or outpatient. For inpatient, they will be accurate, reduce the medical uh, mistake, and be specific. And for outpatient, we save the time for the patient to get the medicine. You mentioned there are so many different ways that we can look at more efficient ways because healthcare is such an expensive industry. Efficiency is absolutely critical here in really being able to use resources to, to the best possible way. And of course, smart technologies is within that. But I want to ask you about something that's really important here because there's been so much talk about AI, smart technologies, how we can use them in all of these different ways. But we have to understand that this technology is being created every single day by each and every single one of us. And with you, Dr. Fozia, being really a pioneer as a female physician, as somebody who is in leadership, where still we have 70% of the healthcare industry is female, but not at the leadership level. It's quite extraordinary to see you doing what you do. It's amazing. Thank you. But I would love for you to speak to the importance of diversity and making sure that we have women in positions of leadership. How does that impact how AI is developed and, and the uses for it and for smart technologies? Uh. I think AI, as we mentioned before, it depends on the feeding the system with the right data and the integrity of this data. Um, I remember an example in the course I attended in the beginning of September with NCAD about a study they did uh, screening by Amazon for the CV. The, the AI will choose 90% male candidate because the feeding was 
mostly that uh, there is a um, there is a favorism of the gender. I think to be a leader or to be uh, a responsible or chairman in any department, it has to be diverse. It has to be based on the capability, not in the gender or any background. Uh, and we should feed this AI with the right information so we can have the right diversity we needed. If you think about the community, half of the community women, so we need to understand it. We need to understand and have the right people uh, to feed this right information so you get the right answer for the right purpose. What can that mean for patient outcomes? It means a lot. I, I told, uh, I think when I started my practice as a physician, I thought applying science will be the perfect example to deal with the patient. But I realized after a while that not science is everything. You need to personalize the treatment plan based on the patient himself. You need to understand what he is for in, and to treat his priority as he wish, not as the medicine wish. I think with the helping of AI, which is helping you to analyze the patient and prepare yourself and tailor the, and make it personalize the treatment, you will get the outcome for the needed. And that's exactly what we are looking for. There is so much ahead to look forward to. And uh, as we said, we need the leadership. Uh, that is going to lead these new technologies in the right direction, in the benefit of all patients as well. Dr. Fozia Ajarala, owner and group CEO of the Hayat National Hospitals Group, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Please join. Thank you so much. Thank you.